What's up guys, it's the next day. So yesterday was a rest day and today we're going to train the back and the cars will be increased just a little bit today and the fats will be decreased. So what we will do is the oatmeal in the morning, it's actually cream of rice by the way, but I like to call it oatmeal because that's the breakfast name, but this is cream of rice, 80 grams. I also put in two uh, egg whites, so that's about 50 grams of egg whites, some Himalayan pink salt, some cinnamon, and that's it. And to this, I'm gonna add some um, whey isolate, some blueberries, and have a kiwi next to it, but also some of the dark chocolate. It adds about max 10 grams of fat in this entire meal. So that's what we will be having for this. Then every other meal will be having rice with the meal as well. Of course, also the post rocket meal. So uh, let me show you this breakfast when it's finished. Alrighty, this is the breakfast you guys all know. Looks perfectly creamy. Cream of rice, you know, we don't have it in the Netherlands, but someone, as I mentioned in other videos, sent me like five kilos before and this is the last two remaining packages so even here in aruba where i also don't have cream of rice i can still use it and it's my favorite breakfast carb source and there's also rice flour but it simply has a different texture doesn't taste as good a little bitter but this is perfect so you're all used to this 80 grams of cream of rice 15 grams of dark chocolate 100 grams of raspberry and blueberry mixture 50 grams of whey isolate and 50 grams of um uh, egg whites and we have a kiwi right here so I'm gonna add a macro to each meal today so you have an idea of how much I eat but in the previous video it was a full day of eating where you can see the macros of an off day where I don't train which are quite low so this will be a bit higher in order to remove the flatness that I saw this morning and not to over diet let's enjoy <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, you want water or you yeah, please. Food? Well, you know it's second. All right, so that was a very nice massage. So I came in wanting to get rid of some water from the whole body, but mostly the legs. But um, she said that the legs are connected to the spine and the spine is connected to the whole body. So you might as well work on the whole body. So she actually checked if there was any tightness anywhere or restriction in movements. There weren't any, so that's nice to know, to have the knowledge going into the show. I'll definitely come here uh, again to, uh, you know, always work age recovery, blood flow, stuff like this, getting rid of some more water, and then uh, we're ready for the Olympia. But anyway, it's been a really awesome experience here. Okay, just got back home, and now it's time for meal number two. This is going to be just a um, protein and vegetable source, no fat, no carbs. So the protein we'll be adding is these famous tuna cans. In total about 48 grams of protein, these two. So that's just enough to elicit muscle protein synthesis. And these vegetables, they are celery, they are uh, zucchini, and actually locally grown eggplant. So uh, it's a delicious mixture. Added some oregano, added some black pepper. It's actually a mixture. A melange and we also added some uh, pink salt so let me show you the end result and I'm actually going to bake this tuna with this and actually tastes pretty good to be honest so let me show you okay this is the meal so it's the tuna it's the vegetables and a little bit of watered down tomato ketchup for an extra flavor so I'm getting this down and uh, see you at the next meal because this one isn't that exciting but in terms of some extra information I'm drinking uh, at least seven bottles of this a day and that means I'm drinking more than six liters towards the end of the prep it's gonna go up to 7.5 liters so an extra bottle I think and it really has already helped me get into an even better shape 
holding less unnecessary water, allowing my body to flush excess water, which is what you need uh, before the show. So uh, anyway, see you at the next one. Okay, so next meal almost looks the same because it exactly is the same thing. Eggplant, zucchini, celery, and two cans of tuna with a bit of watered down ketchup through it, black pepper. This time I added some thyme for a bit of a different aroma and some salt. And I'm uploading the video for you guys right now. Well, actually it's uh, rendering, then I'm uploading it. So uh, yeah, it should be up. By the time this video is up, obviously this one will be. It's where I trained shoulders and arms. Next meal will be 50 grams of rice, golden rice. This is going to be the pre-workout meal, so adding some turmeric powder. And with 250 grams of codfish, and with some vegetables, we have pumpkin and celery combined. Gonna steam it for about five to six minutes and combine it all. Alrighty, this is the finished product. Some beautiful codfish, perfectly cooked. We have some pumpkin, we have some celery, and the 50 grams of golden rice with plenty of Himalayan pink salt, because I always add some extra pre-workout, because you know you'll lose a lot of it during the workout, and you get a much better pump. Let's enjoy, and see you at the workout. All right, and the back workout is underway. So this is the second time we're training back in hardcore fitness gym, and this time it's at night after four meals, because it's on a Sunday, and on a Sunday, the gyms aren't open uh, anymore in the evening. So we had the gyms for ourselves because the gym owner opened it up for me and William Bonek, which is amazing. Anyway, this is the LED pull down machine. And the nice thing about this is I can achieve full range of motion. So if you look at the lats, you can see that the lats, so the sides on my back, and by the way, that is William Bonek training legs hardcore but anyway if you look at my lats when i'm doing this exercise you can literally see them uh, moving outwards as i stretch at the top and then move inwards at the bottom and that is the way to do a lat pull down making sure that the shoulder blades are working and making the lats as short as possible at the bottom and as lengthened as possible at the very top so all of the exercises today except for a few bicep movements will be with the following principle. The first few sets always be warm-up sets, so about five reps each. And I progressively go up in weight using only five reps. And once I feel that I'm hitting a weight where I can hit around 10 to 12 reps, that'll be my first working set that you just saw. So the working set is always going to be to failure. And obviously when the lighting is pretty good, you wanna hit some poses just to see what you look like, especially when you're working out, getting a good pump, you wanna see what the back truly looks like. And um, when you still have a lot of definition with a pump, you know that things are going all right. And this is the second working set. And as I mentioned, a working set is a working set when you go to absolute failure. So my definition of failure is that you can't complete another rep yourself. So the moment that you feel that the next rep would only be half a rep or an incomplete rep, or you have to use momentum to achieve the full range of motion, then I would not even attempt to hit that rep un unless you specifically want to do some partial reps. But hitting failure is the moment you can't do another full rep anymore by yourself. So the next movement is the chest supported T-bar row. It is one of my favorite movements. Pretty much any chest supported row I really like because look at what the back is doing. I'm able to stretch the lats out and especially the rhomboids, which are, you know, in the inner upper back. So that's really the back thickness I've been working on the last year to make sure that has been improved for the Olympia. The back can never be big enough such as a lot of other muscles but anyway you can see that i can achieve a good stretch even in the rhomboids because the chest supported machine is keeping my upper body in place yet the weight is pulling all the way down allowing for a full stretch and as we all know the better the stretch the better 
the contraction will be. So I go all the way down until I feel that specific stretch and then go all the way up, maximally shortening those rhomboids and those back muscles until I hit failure. Now, this is going to be a cluster set after having done uh, one working set of around 10 to 12 reps. So that's the first working set. Then I'm doing a cluster set with the exact same weight because I'm doing a cluster set with my 10 rep max, which is what the previous working set was. Now, cluster sets are an incredible way to make your body demand more calories. And when you're at the end of prep, that's a very nice thing to actually indirectly burn body fat. So usually when you're in an off season doing this kind of work, you actually need, you can ultimately eat more calories to grow because the more you can eat, the more you can work and vice versa. This is the best way to grow in my opinion, which is why I've been implementing cluster sets all year as well. Um, I got inspired by honestly James Hollingshead watching his YouTube. You can see him doing those techniques quite a lot himself. And they really allow you to go much deeper than a regular working set. And after the cluster set, we're still doing the chest support the row the same exercise. We removed half a plate and then we're simply going to do a triple drop set. So this is the first set and we're doing two sets after this. And you hit the next set by removing a plate the moment you hit failure. So you don't want to make any weird movements when doing a drop set. Simply when you can't complete another complete rep anymore, the spotter needs to remove the weight and you continue to do the reps without a break in between until you hit failure when the last plate is still on. So that's a triple drop set for you, really fatiguing and finishing off that back on this chest supported T-bar row. All right, this next one is a low row. So the T-ball row targeted more of the upper and middle back. Now this low row will target the lower back really well. You can see that in the next clip very clearly. So this is one of the warm-ups that I'm showing you. And I'm not showing you every single warm that I'm doing. But here in this clip, you can really see which muscles are being worked by this exercise. And this also happens to be the first working set. So if you look at the lower lats, so the lower back muscles, the Christmas tree muscles, those are being optimally targeted by this movement because you can literally see the contraction is there. So the trick in back workouts, in back days, in developing a thick back is what I've learned over the years and not only the full stretch that you can achieve, but also the full shortening of the back muscles because that is the most difficult thing to achieve when doing a back exercise is to maximally shorten those back muscles. A lot of people do so heavy weights that they can't get into that maximally shortened position. And that position happens to be exactly where you get that back thickness development. So that's really what you want to focus on. And now we're doing the second working set. So uh, what I also wanted to say is that even though the lower lats are being worked here, there's always going to be all other back muscles working alongside the emphasized muscle that you're working. So just like with uh, doing, for example, a squat, you will train the quads mostly, but also the glutes, also the hamstrings. You can't isolate a movement when it's a uh, compound movement. So that is not a possibility. Now the next movement is a unilateral movement and I'm going straight to working set number two. So the first working set was simply again, 10 to 12 reps until failure on this movement. However, this one is with a squeeze, just a one second squeeze at the very end to make sure that the weight that I'm using, I'm able to control. So doing a unilateral movement also allows you to work on the weaker side of the back first and then the stronger side. Now, honestly, for me, the left side usually is a bit weaker, but in this instance, it didn't really matter probably has to do with being at the end of prep. You don't really have full strength anyway, 
but the big benefit of a unilateral movement here is that you can achieve slightly larger range of motion especially in a shorter position because if you move both arms at the same time that limits the range of motion that you can pull backwards so here you can actually move your body along with the movement allowing you to hit an even more shortened muscle belly you can see all the striations here because the lighting is really really good it gives you an idea of the conditioning and i'm still feeling pretty good of course being tired here and there but that is normal during prep but i still feel energized during the training which is very important a very important sign that you're not digging a hole for yourself that is too deep so always keep that in mind when doing uh prep only in the last week maybe when you're doing a depletion phase that's when you should feel really weak but your strength should be kept up until the very end of the prep if it's not you did something wrong along the way maybe you're not hydrated enough had too many low days or didn't log properly or do too much volume not enough sleep etc then the next movement is again a chest supported movement this is a seated rope row and this targets the uh, rhomboids and the upper middle back once again i really love rows like this because that's exactly the part that i want to grow that i want to maintain thickness at and uh yeah just go straight to the working set i think i only did one working set with this movement anyway but it's a great way to finish off that back uh movements and then the next one is simple rear delt flies now these aren't really working sets even though i am going to failure because the reps are so high here i usually like to call it simple sets because i don't do warm-up sets for this i do straight sets that has always worked really well for the rear delts because in my opinion the more blood you can get into those posterior delts the better it'll be for the growth there and that has been proven at least in my physique that going light but with high volume on those small muscle groups is the best way to make them grow as long as you know your mind muscle connection should be there so don't use the traps just use the rear delts and then it is time for some bicep curls because the back workout for me isn't complete without finishing off the biceps now the bicep movement we're doing here is a preacher curl machine and you might notice throughout all the workouts i'm doing of course normally i do a lot more old school free weight classic movements and in fact back in the day they were able to do all of that until the uh, end of the combat prep because they simply didn't go uh, as deeply in terms of conditioning which didn't pose as much of a risk as we guys go through nowadays so what you don't want to do is put unnecessary strain or risk on muscles that you're not specifically training right now so using machines with fixed range of motion so that you can really focus and isolate on the muscle you're working is the best way to protect yourself in the last few weeks from injuries because what you're really doing now is maintain muscle mass by sending an impulse to the muscle so that your brain knows okay this muscle is still being used we si simply need to maintain that amount of muscle mass and make sure to still log these lifts so you know that you still should keep lifting them as heavy as you possibly can with the proper rep ranges like 8 to 12 and 15 to 20 but anyway this next movement is a unilateral bicep movement i like to do at least one unilateral movement for the biceps whenever i do train them so this machine was actually a little too small for me but i was still able to get a very good contraction however the stretch was subpar but anyway i still felt a very good connection to the biceps for sure and then the last bicep movement is the alternating hammer curl with the dumbbells now exercises like this obviously you can do free weight it's very easy it's light on the body it's not as fatiguing and you can really easily isolate those biceps but especially the brachialis part of the biceps and the forearms which always need work and can never be big enough when i'm when i'm doing a back double bicep one of the trademark things in my back double bicep apart from the shoulders is also the line in between my bicep and triceps which is brachialis trained with this movement all right we got back home quite an awesome back workout and the post-rocket meal is a bit different from usual because now it's 
night time. And normally I work out after the first or second meal of the day. And now I already had four meals. So the difference in the timing is there. So the post workout meal still contains carbohydrates, but instead of codfish, I'm actually eating salmon because that's what I usually eat at the fifth meal of the day. We're not gonna be doing much more today except for a few steps to get these steps in, but we don't need to take as many steps anymore since it's near the end of the day and you already took automatically some steps during the day. We're also going to be adding some pumpkin, so I'm gonna cut a piece of this off. Pumpkin is a low FODMAP vegetable, doesn't bloat you, it contains uh, healthy minerals and vitamins and it just digests really well for me. So um, the gym actually on Sunday we are used to being open like in the Netherlands we have our own gym on Transfigion and I don't even know what, what day it is, it doesn't matter because I'm always able to train 24-7. But here Saturday and Sunday the gyms are closed much sooner. So when we actually found that out in the morning and I already had the massage therapist booked as you saw in this video. So the gym owner of Hardcore Fitness was nice enough to open the gym for me and William to be able to train in privacy. So it's really nice to see that a true hardcore gym actually supports hardcore bodybuilding. Uh, like bodybuilders going to the Olympia. So uh, I'm gonna finish this meal up and show you the end result of this post-workout meal. Would you look at this guys, would you look at this. This is the old school meal I love to eat. Golden rice, healthy vegetables that are easy to digest, and salmon, one of the healthiest fish, one of the healthiest protein sources period out there. High in omega-3 fatty acids, anti-inflammatory, and ultimately if your body is low in inflammation, you will hold less water, which is a good thing. So a nice protein, fat, and carb meal. Haven't had that one in a long time. Anyway, let's enjoy this one. And after this, we're gonna do some walking and then at the last minute of the day. Okay guys, as always, we are finishing off the 10,000 steps a day by walking outside. And I think, and uh, you know, the 10,000 steps are more than enough, as you can see by the conditioning. So the less I can do, with my legs, the better it is for fullness and ultimately conditioning as well. Because if you walk a lot, you're still simply going to hold more water, which is what happened in Las Vegas when I was there the first time. We walked around the whole time and uh, you know, it wasn't good for holding water in the legs because you want your legs to rest. That's why the bodybuilders always put their legs up to let the water actually uh, go down away from the legs. That might be bro science, but there is some truth to it. Relaxing the legs, make sure that you don't uh, put any uh, excess fluid in there. You want that to be crisp and dry. So uh, the upper body is pretty much complete. Can't really be more conditioned, but the legs can always get to another step. You know, uh, striations are everywhere. But now it's time to get to the next level of these two weeks. So the steps will not slow down. Perhaps only in a few less days, of course, when you will be resting and loading. But that also depends on the weight that I uh, am at the moment. And the nice thing is, the classic physique weigh-ins are in the morning. So that's a big benefit. So I, if I need to, I'm simply going to skip breakfast and then weigh in way right on the dot and then start loading for two days which is awesome anyway let's finish this up and eat the last meal of the day okay just got back from the walk and immediately made this meal nothing too exciting just two whole eggs and 350 grams of liquid egg whites or just egg whites from the eggs from the uh full day of eating video you can see exactly how i do that but yes this is the last meal and it's probably going to be the same until the very end Okay guys, I really want to thank you for watching, it was another awesome day. Tomorrow is going to be a chess day, always exciting, so since I'll be recording every single day, you can expect that to drop tomorrow or maybe a Q&A video. It really depends on what I'm able to upload here because the speed of uploading is like literally a day and at back at home it's literally 10 seconds. That's just the difference in Wi-Fi quality uh, between at least this part 
in this apartment in Aruba and back at home in the Netherlands. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden and see you in the next video.